Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the second tutorial. In the last tutorial, we created the UV map and in this tutorial, we are going to cover how to create a texture map using Photoshop. In this video tutorial, we're going to be focusing on how to create wood. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, Photoshop. We are going to go into images and there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can just click and drag this into Photoshop which will give us our UV map. Or you can always go to File, Open, and find your scene. Up here at the top right, if we go to Image, Image Size, you'll notice that we are 2048 by 2048. Perfect, that's a 2K map. 1024 is a 1K map. And let's go ahead and take a look at our textures. Now, we know that this is the top of the barrel and the bottom, and this is the barrel itself. So what we're gonna do is maybe start off with some wood. So I already have a wood texture. I'm going to click and drag it and drag it in. I'm going to do what's called the control A, which is select all. You can do it the long way, which is up here, which is select all, but I'm kind of like, like shortcuts. So control A is select all. Control C is copy. Control V is paste. Now notice how big this file is. That's actually very important. We want to make sure that our texture files are actually really large and that we scale them down. We do not want to have a small map and then we or a small texture and scale it up because the resolution will get will lessen. This is actually exactly what we want. We want a large piece. So I'm going to control T. Sorry. Let's do a uh, control T, which is trans free transformations. Hold down shift and scale I'm going to rotate this. So to rotate, you just have to go at the edges. And if you hold down control or shift, it will actually snap it into uh, position. I'm going to scale this down. I think I rotated it funny. So up here at the top, I can always type in, let's try 90 by 90. That was scale. Uh, let's do 90 here, actually. There we go. We can scale this one down. And what I'm trying to do is place this a presenter to accept that change. It's a little hard to see the UVs. So what I'm going to do is take my layer zero and drag it to the top, right? So now you can see it. I'm also going to create a new layer, bring it down, and I'm going to select a color that's very similar to the barrel. So for example, something like around this color. Then I'm going to fill it. Now there's a couple of ways you can fill just like anything else. I like to use shortcuts, so shift backspace will give me a fill and I can choose a foreground and then click OK. Um, other people like to use the bucket. So there's a paint bucket tool right here. So just make sure you're in layer two and fill it. All right, I'm going to go to layer two. I'm going to double click on it. And this is going to be my background. This is going to be wood one because I'm going to have plenty of those. And then this is going to be my UV snap. My biggest fear is that I'm going to accidentally paint on the UV snap. So select that. I'm going to click on this little lock. That means um, I won't be able to paint on it. So if I accidentally grab a brush and try to paint, it says you can't because it's locked. But I do the same thing with the background because my biggest fear is going to paint on the background and I'm going to try to avoid that as much as I can. All right, I have my wood. Everything's looking good so far. I'm going to try to fit it into my UV snap. I'm going to do a control J, which is duplicate. I'm going to shift, hold down shift and drag. And now we're going to get to something what's what's the bane of texturing, which is repeating textures. You can see right here that we're getting um, kind of like a mirror image. Um, we're also getting the same stain over and over. So we're going to have to fix that. And now I'm going to show you how. So let's do, um, I'm going to do, you see wood copy one. I'm going to do a control E, which merges them together. Control J, which again duplicates it. Um, I mean, my move tool which is V for shortcut. Again, I've been using Photoshop for a while, so um, I have a tendency to kind of do this really quickly, but um, move tool, hopefully you understand the basics of Photoshop by now. And moving it down a little, Control T again for transform. I'm going to right click on it and then say flip horizontal and then flip vertical. And that's gonna help kind of break up the textures a little bit. And then one more time, control J, and just so I can scoot this over a little bit. So maybe do a little overlap like so. All right, so this covers all of the UV right here. Take the wood, control E, control E, it merges down, and now we have our wood texture. 
All right, so let's see. The biggest thing, I'm gonna turn off this UV snap, is how repeating it is. Um, because our eyes are used to seeing patterns. And we wanna make sure that we get rid of these things. We don't want to see repeating textures. So there's several tools that we can use in Photoshop which will help us get rid of those. So the first one I'd like to go over is called a spot healing brush. The spot healing brush literally is you paint it and then it tries to get rid of it. If you don't like it, you feel like there's a weird line, I would get rid of it. But this is a nice way of kind of removing some of these repeating textures. This will help uh, change the textures around. Now this will take a while, so just keep that in mind, but at least this kind of helps uh, break down the texture a little bit. But it's fancy, isn't it? It's a good tool. Um, other things that you can do is use the patch tool, which you can kind of take a chunk here, and then you can drag it and then place it on top and then it will try to like mimic and average it out, which kind of helps a lot if you're trying to break things up, for example. So that's also really nice. Um, we also have the healing brush tool, which is very similar to the clone tool, which means that you have to hold down um, alt, you click somewhere, and then you can paint over here and it will try to kind of mimic it and burn it together, kind of average it out. Now again, you have to be careful because it has a tendency to duplicate certain textures. So it's really important that you kind of go through and just try to remove some of the major components of that repeating texture. Now we've already put a lot of effort into this, so let's file, save as, file, save as, the long way, or the shortcut is shift, control, S. I'm going to call this barrel, CLR for color, and I am gonna use PSD, which is the Photoshop file format, and I'm gonna keep the layers because I'm going to be working on this for a bit. Now let's see what we got so far. Okay, this is our barrel, it's really boring. Let's assign a new material. Let's go into our Arnold and we're gonna use AI standard surface. It's right here. I'm gonna call it barrel underscore shader. Crank it up to one, the weight. And over here is the color. We're gonna click on this little checker, file, little folder. And it automatically looks for the texture in source images. However, we are working on it so we are going to look for that barrel CLR, which stands for color. Open that up. And you're gonna wonder why nothing happened. Well, you have to actually click the number six on your keyboard, six. And you can see the texture shows up right away, which is awesome. Looks nice, nice already. By the way, if you are wondering where it's located, it's right here. So if I press the number six, I can press five, six, and then a texture will appear. Uh, seven, you'll notice that the lights turn on. There's no light, so that's why it's dark. Um, so just letting you know. Cool. Now, I'm still having a lot of repeating textures. I got to be careful with those. So I'm going to go ahead and continue going into Photoshop and trying to remove some of these major components that are really repeating and really distracting. So let's go ahead and do all that for a little bit. We are going to be doing some extra things to kind of break things apart. So don't worry. This is just a little bit of that... Um, aspect of it. We were just want to kind of get rid of. All right. I think that's a good place to keep putting layers. So when it comes to texture artists, you really need to put layers on your textures. That means that you just can't leave it the way it is. You really need to think about like really wearing this thing down and like changing the colors. So I have this thing called concrete. Let's go ahead and open it. And I really like all these scratchiness that it has. So I'm going to make a selection by click on this little guy up here. Click and drag. Make a selection, control C. And then I'm just going to paste it. Now, one of my the fun things about concrete is I'm a big fan of the textures that concrete has. So I'm going to try to move this concrete so that it fits into my UVs. So again, here's my UVs. I got to make sure that everything is inside the UV space. And then what I'm gonna use is one of these modes. So in Photoshop, usually everything is a normal mode, but it also has some fun things called darken, and I'm gonna use my keyboard uh, down key to just kinda go through them. Now this one's fun, this is called multiply, and you can see how it affects it. If I turn off this eyeball, you'll note, and maybe this, so it's distracting. You can see that it does darken it, but it really kinda breaks up the textures a lot. So that might be something to look into. We also have color, whoop, too dramatic, too dramatic. 
crazy crazy i'm just going down the keyboard with here's overlay overlay is also very nice you can see how it breaks up the texture like that so it really gets it that really interesting color and I think I'm going to go to overlay and just kind of reduce the intensity so again you're considered a texture artist it's not about just finding that perfect wood and place it on it's about you and I'm calling this concrete one it's about you exploring this um, textures and overlaying and multiplying and see what you can come up with um, I'm going to add a little bit of noise to this so again you can just grab regular textures and paste it in there again it's in grayscale so it's going to add a little bit of interesting texture to it I'm scaling it down and let's try maybe darken doesn't really work but multiply is actually very interesting uh, it's a little too intense so I'm going to go ahead and reduce it the opacity but what we get is this really interesting look so this is wood one this is concrete and this is uh, concrete too. So we get some really interesting looks. So let's save for now and let's go back into Maya. And we need to notice that the textures haven't changed. Let's go to color. There's a little output connection. Let's click on that and click on reload. And then there we go. We get this really awesome looking texture. It's coming along. So I'm trying to create a really worn barrel which is the effect that I'm getting. Really enjoying this process. All right, let's call this concrete. All right, I'm gonna select my three textures. I'm gonna middle map, I'm gonna grab them and drag them into this little folder down here at the bottom right. And that's gonna give me a group and I'm gonna call this wood. All right, cool. Let's talk a little bit about masking. So I really don't need all of this extra information here at the top, right? This is going to impact the, the rest of my UV. So you can see that it's affecting the bottom of the barrel and I really don't need that type of look. So in Photoshop, I'm going to use masks. So if I select this wood one, there's this little thing right here called a mask and you can click on it and it turns white. It's a little link that's connected to the folder. What that means is that white, you'll be able to see something and black means that you can't see it. So what I'm going to do is make a selection right here, right above the UVs. Then I'm going to fill it with white. So if I do shift backspace, instead of using the foreground, I can use the background. Actually, I'm sorry. White means you can see it. Black means you can't. So I'm going to choose the foreground and click OK. And it looks like Control D to deselect. It looks like I've erased something, but it's still there. The texture is actually being protected, but we just don't see it anymore, which is nice because it's a non-destructive way of erasing something. So for example, if I grab a white brush and I start painting, I can actually bring this back. I don't want to right now, but I can. So masks are really great. And we're gonna be using a lot of those in um, a little bit. All right, so we have our texture here. I'm going to duplicate this wood folder because I have more wood over here. So let's go ahead and do a control J, which is going to duplicate it. And I'm going to bring this up. What I'm going to do is make a selection like so. Actually, one it's a circular selection. So let's grab a circle. Hold down shift alt click and drag and it will create a circle from the center the way you clicked. So I'll do that again. Control D to deselect. Shift, Alt, click in the middle of your circle and out, and then you can make a circular selection based on your, the center. Just those little tricks. All right, we're gonna invert this because we wanna paint everything else black, so Control, Shift, I, and then Control, Backspace, and that will fill it with black. So Control, Backspace, floods everything with the back color. So you're gonna be learning a lot in this uh, uh, e-course, lots of shortcuts. So Shortcuts equals saving money, right? Because you're faster. That means that you can produce fast work, which means that they want to keep you. Companies want to keep you because you actually are producing the fastest work that you can. Control J again. We're going to take this and just kind of drag it over here to this particular space. Cool. Let's clean this up a little bit. I'll get a little line right here. Again, Control Backspace. So now we have, this one is the bottom, this is the top, and this is the 
probably the body. You can always hide our UV snaps, save, go into here, reload, and there we go. We'll get him some really nice looking texture. Nice. All right, so next we need to start talking about what, how to create those metal strips. Thank you so much for watching. That was how you can quickly create some wood texture. In the next video tutorial, we will cover how to create the metal strips. So if you guys have any comments, please leave them below. And of course, please like and share. If you feel that this video tutorial is helpful for others, please share this video. If you have time, don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you will find free tutorials, free eBooks, free downloads, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.